Welcome everyone again, and thanks for attending today. I'm going to talk about uh, data center interconnection using Equinix Fabric. I did notice there was a lot of questions about the backbone in the previous session, so hopefully I'll address um, some more of those during this session. And I'm also going to talk about some common use cases and um, some details about the architecture of our uh, fabric network. But first, let's share some insights from the move to digital infrastructure that influenced the creation of our fabric network. And we're definitely seeing a dig shifting digital landscape. Um, COVID accelerated a lot of that. We're seeing that customers um, want to enable digital infrastructure at software speed. And that's resulted in different by uh, new buying behaviors for network services. Uh, customers want to buy their network services in the same fashion they buy cloud services. They want it to be more cloud-like. Um, they don't necessarily want to place an order and wait you know, 30, 60, 90 days um, for that to get turned up. They want to spin up and spin down services on demand as needed. And much like the cloud, they just want to pay for what they use. Um, we see that customers also <clears throat> want access to a vast ecosystem of cloud providers, not just one cloud provider, but multiple cloud providers. And um, they also need access to their network services, um, their partners, their suppliers, paths, services, et cetera. And that kind of led us to create our fabric network and enable some of these services for our customers. So <clears throat> this map view is a picture of our Equinix data centers and the red dots are where we have Equinix fabric. So you can see that we've deployed fabric in the majority of our data centers. There's only a few that don't have it today. And then about three years ago, we decided to connect all those data centers together over fabric. So we have, um, uh, we have a global backbone now that spans America's EMEA and Asia Pacific. And we also have connectivity between Singapore and Frankfurt, for example, if you wanna create a connection. And <clears throat> so we have connectivity between those different regions. And as they mentioned earlier, we recently added um, the locations in Canada. So we've added Calgary, um, Winnipeg, Montreal. We have had Toronto for a while. We've added a few locations in India, that are popular in um, Latin America as well. So 50, fabric is in about 50 plus metros globally. And so next let's look at some details about how we built out the network. Um, to a question earlier, it is um, built on third party links that we buy from a diverse carriers. So it's built on dual links, we have diverse routes with diverse carriers. We started out with 10 gig links. We've um, pretty much upgraded almost all of that to 100 gig. Only a few locations are still at 10 gig. And we offer virtual connections from <clears throat> spanning from 50 meg to up to 10 gig across those links. On, and so it, the connections are on a shared infrastructure. Um, we do manage capacity very closely on a three to one over subscription rate or greater than 50% utilization. And we're constantly monitoring that and <clears throat> looking for different routes and different ways that we can offer our customers uh, lower latency. Traffic is load balanced across both of those links. I'm on a seven tuple based flow. And um, we do use shortest path redirect upon failure based on I6 metrics. So we do feel like it's a pretty, uh, very redundant infrastructure built on diverse routes from diverse carriers. And so next, let's talk about how you create connections across the, the fabric. We, from a layer two ethernet perspective, we offer both VLAN based and port based connectivity. So in the VLAN based scenario, um, sometimes known as EVPL or Ethernet virtual private line, um, you can have a single fabric port or even a um, virtual device in a metro. And from that, that device or port, you can create multiple connections from that single port or device. You can create connections to multiple cloud providers, 
but you should well, you could also have a connection to your presence in another uh, Equinex Metro. So in this scenario, we have um, a customer in Ashburn has connections to cloud providers, and they also have a presence in Dallas. They would need to have a port or a device in Dallas to connect to, but they can add a connection to connect their assets together in a different metro, all from the same port. Um, in the second scenario, in the point-to-point -point scenario, this is EPL, which Brian mentioned earlier, Ethernet private line. Um, and this would be a port-based connection. So it's not gonna recognize VLANs. It's everything that goes in the port on one side goes out the other side. It's not gonna separate the traffic. It, that doesn't mean you can't have VLAN, include VLANs in your traffic. We're just not gonna do anything with that. And you might say, well, why, why would I wanna do this? Well, <clears throat> what we heard from a lot of customers is that they want the ability to run MACSEC layer two encryption protocols over their connection. And this does enable that. You need EPL to do that. So um, <clears throat> it's EPL is port-based. So you have to have an EPL port in each location, and you can only create one connection between those two EPL ports. So that's very important. But you can send whatever you want over that connection, and you can encrypt your traffic using MACSEC. Um, Equinix does not encrypt that traffic. Customers encrypt it. We just support it with this EPL service. And for those customers who have, you know, multiple Equinix locations, we do hope to do a multi-point to multi-point service coming in um, 2022. So stay tuned for that. So yeah, next we're going to look at this. This is a pretty common data center interconnect use case where customer has location in three metros in this picture. Um, they have ports or virtual devices in each metro and they want to connect those together so they can share as assets or app access workloads in the different locations. So they can do that over fabric. You need it port in each location or a virtual device, and then you would create a virtual connection between those ports or devices. And kind of the cool thing about this is that you can order those ports or virtual connections online. So you order your ports, when they get turned up, you'll go into the portal and you can create that connection between your ports. Um, you can also do any of this via the APIs, and we're gonna talk about automation later, but if you want to embed the um, provisioning of those circuits within your own applications, you can do that using the full set of Fabric API. Um, it does support on-demand bandwidth mods. You can turn up and turn down the bandwidth as needed. There's a lot of reasons that you might wanna do that. You may um, run a retail operation where you need more bandwidth because you have higher traffic over the holidays. You can turn that up for a couple of months and then turn it back down later if you don't need it. Um, there are no term commitments with this, so it's flexible terms. We do monthly billing prorated down to the 24 hour um, minimum. And because we do have a pretty robust infrastructure, we have SLAs associated with your virtual connections. And like I said, you can make them from ports or from network edge virtual devices. So um, it's, pre it's very flexible on demand as needed type service. And then next, let's look at a use case for using Fabric to connect to cloud providers in different metros. So in the top um, diagram, we have an EBPL scenario. So you might have a Fabric port in one metro and you want to make a connection to a cloud provider that is not in your local metro, but it's in a different metro. You can easily do that over Fabric, you need a Fabric port or uni in your Metro One where you have a presence, and then you simply create a virtual connection to that um, cloud provider in Metro Two. And you'll be connecting to that cloud provider's NNI, so you wouldn't need a port in Metro Two. It's simply one port in Metro One and one connection to that cloud provider. Um, you might want to do this because the cloud provider doesn't reside in that uh, in your own metro, or you may want to do it for redundancy. You might want a fabric location, um, connection to AWS in your local metro, and then a redundant connection to AWS in another metro, for example. And in the lower diagram, we're um, 
or showing using EPL because let's say that you have a presence in one metro in your local metro and um, that you want to connect to a cloud provider in a different metro and you want to use fabric to get between those two metros. The way you would do that would be you would need a dedicated physical connection in that remote metro. So you would need a port and a dedicated connection in that other metro. You cannot use the NNI because we're using APL, remember. So uh, two ports and one connection between it. But once you have that dedicated connection to your cloud provider in your remote metro, you can create an EPL connection between the two and you can run MaxSec encryption end to end from your enterprise location into the cloud in a different metro. So that's another common use case that we, that we see often. And here I am, um, I didn't, I'm not gonna do a demo today. We're not gonna have time, but I took a couple screenshots of um, how easy it is really to create those connections in the, in the portal. And Eric showed you a little bit of that er earlier, but if in the first, scenario that we talked about where you're connecting your own assets together, you would simply go into the portal and request to create a connection. And then you would say you're con connecting to yourself. You would select your A side or origin port and your Z side port in the other metro. And then you would connect them together. The connection turns up like that in um, less than 15 minutes and you're good to go. And in the second one, you would be connecting to a cloud provider. So you say, I want to connect to a service provider. You select your cloud provider. You select your metro port and then the um, cloud provider in the destination location. And again, you're up and running in a few minutes. Um, we had a recent customer. We were on the phone with them one night and they were talking about how long it's taken their network provider to get their 100 gig circuit turned up. I mean, 10 gig circuit turned up. Um, between London and Ashburn, I believe it was. And we said, hey, you can use the fabric and get that turned up until you know your permanent connection is live. So they were able to go into the fabric, order two ports, get those ports turned up. They were EPL. So they ordered two EPL ports, one in London and one in Ashburn. They, um, once those ports were up, they came into the portal, turned up the connection and they were passing traffic all within about 22 hours. So. It can be done very quickly um, and you can use it, you know, temporarily until your permanent connection is up if that's how you want to you if that's how you want to use the fabric. And so next we we do have a poll. So based on what you heard today, um, can you think of some scenarios where you might see value in these data center interconnect capabilities? Um, maybe as a backup to an existing MPLS network that you have or maybe to interconnect your assets in different metros, or to use Fabric to connect to cloud providers in different metros, and to extend Cloud Connect capabilities to OpsNet metros. So um, we'll give you a few minutes to answer and then we can look at the results. Oh yes, okay, I like to see that, thank you. So we see uses for all those different scenarios and it, um, Feel free to reach out to your GSA or sales team if you want to learn more about how that would be done or if you want to learn more about our backbone. But to wrap it up, in the next slide, um, Fabric what you can, does allow you to connect to more than 200 service providers across a global backbone and spanning more than 50 metros. So, um, a lot of options there. You can connect your infrastructure in multiple locations. You can do it on demand and you can scale it up and down to meet your business needs. You can also use Fabric as a temporary solution. Um, uh, some customers use it to do things like data migration. We had customers that turned up connections between two locations and they left it up for a couple months while they were doing data migration and move, moving um, to a different location. Then they turned it down when they did, no longer needed it. That's exactly what it's there for. Um, seasonal bandwidth, we talked about that, um, and any other um, flexible requirements that you uh, may meet your business needs. It is a redundant, redundant reliable solution. Um, you can also use it as a backup to your production networks is another way we see customers using it. So thanks very much, and then we can um, move over to the Q&A. Yeah, Don, a couple of questions came in via Q&A. Uh, the first one is SLA on EPL. 
Yeah, we do have an SLA on EPL. It's the same as the EVPL services. So we have SLAs for availability, packet loss, jitter, and um, latency. Great. Uh, another question that may need a little bit of clarification, but uh, how can you tell if our site can support Metro or not? I'm not sure what's meant by Metro there. Um, any of your sites should be able to support local in Metro connections or what we sometimes refer as re to as remote or inter-Metro connectivity. Okay, uh, that's all I see uh, on the q and Unless a couple more come in very quickly here, but, but uh, that's all I see right now. Yeah, it looks like they answered a few questions in the chat too, so thank you. Oh, here's another good one that just popped up. Uh, any roadmap for offering a non-oversubscribed fabric connection between Equinix facilities? Um, we have a few things in our roadmap. That's not the top of the list. Um, so, you know, first of all, we're, we are looking at doing the multi-point to multi-point. We may do some sort of um, uh, route selection type offer as well in the future we have customers that you know for example want to keep their data in canada or want to keep their data in, in, in america and don't want to traverse canada and then there's all the ggpr restrictions in EMEA, so we're looking at doing something like that um, ahead of that but we are always willing to take customer requests and look at putting those on the roadmap all right great thanks everyone